Today's episode, we bring to you David Brin's Star Tide Rising. Let's get out of here. Ready for light speed? One, two, three! Welcome back to Book Buzzers. Uh, today, once again, we're talking about Star Tide Rising by David Brin. It is the 10th joint winner of the Hugo Nebula Prize. Uh, that was in 1983-84. It also won the Locust Prize in 1984. This is the second of David Brin's Uplift Saga novels. There is a total of six of them uh, over a period of 18 years. And they're all set in the same universe of a far, far, far future Earth. And species uh, have evolved on Earth, including dolphins and apes. And it's set in a galaxy with a coalition of advanced, evolved species that owe a certain... They're all linked by a shared heritage from a progenitor ancient species. So... By way of brief synopsis, this intergalactic community that is the setup for this book, uh, it's, this is by far the best aspect of, of David Brin's work. He brings together this really insane mix of murderer's row aliens. Uh, they're all devious and treacherous and incredibly advanced, and the only thing they can kind of agree on is uh, how many different kind of ways they want to try and murder each other. Um, and they have client species, which are, uh, they're, uh, what would you call them? Um, they're their puppets. And they use them and throw these other species at each other while they sit on their intergalactic couch and, and eat morsels of other aliens that they've murdered. Uh, he has so much fun with this. Uh, David Brin's, it, it, it it's not as if they all have, you know, characters and personalities, but I've never seen anybody else put together um, this soup, this melange of, of just pure, vicious alien hatred. Uh, it's quite believable. He, he really does a magnificent job of, of setting this scene where they're being chased, the, the humans and their dolphin and ape uh, cohorts, are being chased by these other species to get a hold of this lost set of progenitor ships. And uh, I don't think I've spoiled anything so far. So for our green lightsaber writing aspect, Bryn reminds me a lot of classic writers like Asimov, Clark, in some ways also Bradbury. Uh, he has advanced degrees in physics and mathematics. He is a considered one of the hard science fiction writers, along with Greg Bear, uh, from the 80s. He, his writing is not fanciful. It's not, you know, really imaginative or poetic phraseology. He gets the science right, but it's a, it's a strange science where he doesn't really talk about the actual science. Um, he doesn't use science as like a a wrench to beat you with. Um, he's not lording over his scientific knowledge with you. He just uses it in proper phraseology to tell a story. And he's very, very convincing in that. Um, the only thing he doesn't really talk about uh, Newtonian or Einsteinian physics is how do you get past you know, the speed of light thing. Um, and if you're really a hard science fiction writer, well, that's the biggest nut to crack. Um, they, all, they all find ways around it, but nobody really can explain explain it in proper physics terms that makes any sense at all. Uh, nonetheless, his writing is, uh, he's solid. I mean, it's a three plus. So three plus on the green lightsaber board. The big idea. He's also really competent. Uh, he doesn't come up with anything you'd say that's earth shattering, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't strike you as, oh, this is going to happen. It's just around the corner. Oh, why didn't I think of that? Um, nonetheless, uh, he 
he paints a really interesting story with evolution and how the what the implications are for living with other species on our planet that are also evolved again you know this is talking about free willy uh with a giant brain and they still have problems uh in addition to humans interacting with each other in a giant dysfunctional family which is always you know a standard now you've got <laughs> dolphins and apes with the same uh, interspecies problems. The other big idea in this book is that there is going to be intergalactic competition from other species and it's not going to look pretty. Um, that, <laughs> I think I think that's a very uh, it's a very I'm oh, sorry I was making noise of the paper again. Uh, that's a very good concept to roll with um, in his storytelling he, he he flushes that out in a believable way, um, which is that they're going to try and murder each other. Again, it's, it's, it's not a revolutionary idea, but he makes it work in his books. Yes, it's a four. It's a four for the blue lightsaber. For the red lightsaber, our storytelling aspect, he is also going to get a solid four. I'm not going to vary from my 3% statistical deviation. That's, that's my formula. And he tells this story that has really nice pace. Uh, you know, there's a lot of backstory and there's a lot more sort of tantalizing bits that he throws out there that will compel you to read the other series. Uh, he, has, he has a really, it's a well thought out history of this universe. Uh, not too many glaring holes. The, there's some glue with this technological library that they all refer to that is corrupted in some way by some pernicious influence that, that kind of glues it all together and gives a, the, his, his galactic community a sort of a, a common touchstone. And he brings together, this is hilarious, it's not teen sci-fi. But there is this kind of lonely teenage guy who, uh, who's got some kind of sexual interest in this other scientist and his also equally goofy, nerdy dolphin companion. And I have to say, it's the first time since Flipper that I've seen this sort of dynamic. Um, <laughs> And he makes it work. The, the, the one ape, the uplifted ape scientist is also a complete baboon's ass. He's really a jerk. And he's a lot of fun because you know, he does everything but throw shit at you. He's just an angry ape. Um, so the... the <laughs> uh, I'm going to stick with the four. Four solid lightsabers for the stellar storytelling aspect. Our overall lightsaber rating for the purple will be... What a surprise, four. Um, the, the most fun aspect of this book, again, is, is just his depiction of these venal, corrupt, deceitful, and quite frankly, really scary <laughs> aliens uh, and their plans and their machinations. And, and um, it, it just it, it enlivens the whole book, the whole thing. Um, you just can't wait to get back to this one race and see who else you know, they've dissected on their table. Um, the entire series has a lot of legs. Like I said, six books uh, in the Uplift series. So, highly recommend four purple lightsabers. My cameraman, the author Peter Joan, keeps reminding me that in addition to the question about the joint winner, uh, you can click below and add comments and questions. So, please do so. We look forward to it.